Hello guys, thanks for joining me in this video. I am going to be talking about law and order and the limits on law. So here we have this article, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds signed a bill Thursday prohibiting transgender girls and women from participating on female sports teams from kindergarten through college. Um, let's just go a bit down to why. No amount of talent, training, or effort can make up for the natural physical advantages males have over females. It's simply a reality of human biology. Forcing females to compete against males is the opposite of inclusivity and it's absolutely unfair. Now I don't, I can't say really that I have a problem with this law, okay? It just, who was forcing females to compete? Like when you see these stories, my, my first question is, who's making this happen, okay? Because a lot of places are like, no, obviously not. Boys and girls are not the same. They don't, they don't have the same, et cetera, et cetera, like that, right? So I'm wondering who's making this happen. I'm wondering why the coaches are allowing it to happen. I'm wondering why parents aren't saying anything. You know, there's a lot more that goes into what happens in schools than just, while well, they were being forced to do it. Well, why? Like, what's going on? That's why I want to know. What's going on just sort of on the personal level, right? But this and a lot of other things I've covered just made me think about law. What, what, what is the law? Why do we have it? Because for the longest time, I thought of law as just like, well, we make a law so that we can punish someone who doesn't follow it. Because basically, that's really... Because really that's kind of what it boils down to, right? If I am a person who wants to do good, then that's what I'm going to do. Regardless if there's a law there to do that or not. If I'm someone who doesn't want to do that, then I'm going to do that regardless, regardless of whether or not there's a law there. So why do we even make laws? Like, what's the point, right? And to me, it's always been punishment. But so I just went, I just went and looked at some definition, okay? So I'll, I will have links in the description that show where I get these ideas from or what has helped me get here, etc. So throughout human history, we've made law to try and create order, it seems like. All right. And this really only works so long as we all agree to these laws, right? If you don't, if, if the greater population doesn't like these laws, then we have revolts. So when you read about these many peasant revolts the, and the just general revolutions that we have, it shows like the, the people's discontent with a law, because that's usually what it is. And this was their way to change the law or this agreement that they lived under. Now, if you want to do, let's see, Merriam-Webster has an interesting definition of law. Let me go. Let me let me bring this up on my side so I can read it to you really quickly because I didn't do that. <laughs> I did not prepare for that uh, as well as I should have. <clears throat> so let's go look at this real quick. So according to Merriam-Webster, a law is a binding custom or practice of a community, a rule of conduct or action prescribed or formally recognized as binding or enforced by a controlling authority. Okay, the whole body of such customs, practices, or rules this can be called law. All right, so this is about control. Law is about control. But it can also be about, well, it's about control. I'll leave it there. So there's two things here, a binding custom or practice of a community. So that doesn't necessarily mean control by the government, right? That can be, you have a tradition in your area and just everybody lives that way. It can be, well, we just don't do this here because we don't do this here. And that's just how everyone lives here. And if you break that, it messes up how the flow of the area where you live. So we've seen that throughout history as well. Okay. So when people are like, well, we don't agree with this anymore and they go against it, then that's, you know, what, that's why they do that because we don't want to live under that idea anymore. So using this definition of law, we can see that we start 
with making personal law for ourselves. So this would be like rules for ourselves. Like, um, we start with our family. Basically, we have rules for us. So let's say our rule for ourselves would be, well, I don't lie. And then we have to, def we have to figure out how we treat our family. You know, what's the law of that, how we treat, um, friends and then strangers and the circle grows bigger until we've, uh, have a layered law here of, um, just as you go, right? For life. So for example, a personal law could be between yourself and your friends is no lies. That could be just a personal law for yourself where you don't tell a lie regardless of who you're talking to. A personal law between you and your friends could be like, well, we don't go to this spot just because we don't go there, right? For whatever reason, we don't like it. We're not, we don't have fun on it, whatever. Personal law for a stranger could be pleasant greeting, help if needed, but mostly leave alone. And you think about that is usually how we train children. You know, you say hello, if they make eye contact or something, and then, you know, you are watching other people to make sure, you know, to see if they need help. And then if they don't, you just leave people alone, let them buy their groceries, do whatever it is they need to do. Right. So that's a law. That's like a personal law. It's a, for, um, how we deal with each other. <clears throat> so religion plays a big part in this for most people as we receive that sort of personal law from our religion, whatever it is. So you can see that in places like Iran, where it may not necessarily be, it didn't, it didn't start in Iran with ladies having to cover themselves as a law. But it did start with a tradition where the ladies had to cover themselves and then it was a law on the books. So that's when we move out into this greater law that's applied to, the, to society you live in. You have this first layer called common law. In common law, you have agreements between people that, ref, that reflect a law perhaps already on the books but not done officially or is not on the books precisely. Okay. Uh, traditions of the area that's treated like a law, but it's not official, right? Is also part of common law. So it's basically anything that's followed, but it's not on the books. So most commonly this, this uh, is exemplified in common law marriage where people just say we are married, they cohabitate, and then they share bills. And that is what's required to say, okay, I'm married, right? Okay. It's going along. So we have sort of this idea that laws are there to control and try and create order in the area, right? So that if, so if we get laws that are too controlling, it creates chaos. If we don't have enough, it creates chaos. So we, we're always looking for this balance, okay? So this is where I think we are with a lot of these laws that we are making in the name of fairness, all right? Um, Many of these official laws can be taken care of through common law effect in the form of traditions that are held by the majority instead of making official laws for it. And so that's kind of where I'm at with this is that in law, we always have the idea of, well, if you guys just live this way, then that is how it is. And that's the common law. Okay. So like I said, I don't think this law is particularly bad, but I don't have enough information to really say that because I don't know who was making other people do something they didn't want to do, right? So I just think that we make laws too easily and either don't enforce the ones we already have or rely on larger government to create more laws that we really don't need. I also think that laws are often made nowadays to virtue signal to people instead of because of a real need for it, okay? Um... <clears throat> I think that the both conservative and liberal movements have shown that you don't really need a law to start changing how people want to deal with things. The liberal movement has shown that by show, by trying to re-educate or by re-educating children in um, every aspect of life that they can get children in. So teachers will teach things in a different way. <clears throat> Um, we've seen just on, on college campuses, especially where they just blatantly teach, uh, Marxism and, uh, socialism and 
anything against America so that when this, these people get out into the world, they don't believe America's good. Excuse me. Um, so, and then the conservative. Oh, don't even get me started on movies and things like that. And then the conservative way is to just, is to have the conservative values lived out in the home, right? Where most of the time the liberal values are outside, conservative values are inside from the home. So a person has to have, has that battle that goes on because each person, each side is trying to culturally through a common law affect them. Okay. And so we know we don't actually need a law to change how something uh, is lived or to even get people punished because we see that on there on the college campus as well where we have a lot of uh, women faking their rapes and then the college campus punishes the guy regardless of any kind of evidence like there's no evidence at all she just says it the college campus punishes him and we go from there that is a common law kind of situation where on the campus you have um uh, what's it called you have a law of the campus basically where if you even do this if you even look like this if you look this way that way whatever then you're gone so we even have sort of that layer of law okay so that's where I'm at right now with this. Where do you stand with this kind of thing? Do you think we have too many laws? I think we have too many laws. I think we're making more than what we need. We have so many laws already saying you cannot lie, that there's punishments for lying, but they're just not enforced. Like no one goes after these women who lie. No one goes after men who lie. No one goes after these people. Um, even when it's proven that they lied. <laughs> like, I get it. I understand that a lot of, you know, you have to have proof. But once you do, you know, these people should be taken to court. So anyways, um, that's where I'm at with this. This is, this is every time I read about somebody making a law, this is where I'm at. We probably don't need it. There's probably a law in the books already that could apply to this. Okay. So anyway, that's where I'm at. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.